Okay, so now that we know where we can start, uh, I'll just put this reference on the side of the screen. And this frontal view I will actually use to sketch what we need to do. Uh, now, we are currently in a perspective view. Uh, we can now come here to this little icon, and if I click on it, you'll notice that we will have a few additional views here. So we have right, front, and top. Currently, it looks like we are in the right view, and you can still use the same functions. So here I'm using one hotkey to click and drag. So I'm going to uh, hold one, and then I'm going to click, and then I'm going to drag. So basically, this allows me to move the viewport. Uh, the second thing, what we would like to do here is instead of lines, we would like to have chord shading. So let's just go into display and set chord shading on. And this will bring our headsets. Now, the next thing, what we can do is actually make this full screen. So we can come right here and simply click on it, and then we'll have our headsets. And again, uh, with middle mouse, uh, you can zoom in or simply can come here if you wish and zoom in and click right here to let's say reposition. So now we have this setup. So let's come here where this cube is. And I'm going to select a tube simply because the tube has if I again toggle this, and if I come to perspective, tube has this actually plane can go a bit here. Uh, tube has already this opening. So we're going to reuse that. So let's come back into right view. Let's go to tube. And now what you can do is go into rotation and select this middle blue and try to rotate it. And while holding shift key, now you notice that it's going into percentage uh, very uh, evenly. But if you hold shift key, you will notice that it will go in 10 intervals. So that's way how you go to 90. Uh, alternative is simply go to tube and go to orientation and set to let's say X. And this will find uh, the orientation that we need. And also what we can do now is there's this yellow line and there's this yellow little handle and if I push this up I can actually make this to the thickness that I would like uh, and again just notice this on the side the, the the same thing goes to inner radius so you can either adjust it manually or using this uh, value here so what I'm gonna do now is just hit scale and I'm gonna scale it up to a certain point like that. Now, this is blocking the view from uh, this back side. And actually, I want to make this transparent. So I can go to tube and I can go to basic and I can turn the X-ray on. And this will show me where the boundaries are. And also we can go into display and select course shading with lines. Uh, now, as you may notice, the tube itself won't show us any. Uh, it will show actually the plane. But if you remember, the plane has only uh, one segment. And here you can see m more than one. So what I'm going to do here is just go from isoparms to wireframe. And then we're going to see also what we need to see here in, in the tube. So basically, I just want to make sure that I have enough of these segments, meaning that if I have two little segments, um, I might not get the right smoothing that I actually need. So in this case, it's better that we have as many uh, segments as possible. For now, I'm going to leave it to 36, but we're going to create a duplicate anyway, just in case we need to come back. So basically what we're trying to do is match uh, this tube. So again, I'm going to select my scale. So I'm trying to match these two points right here. And then the la later on, I'm going to try and just 
adjust the other points to match the rest of the shape. And so for now, let's use move tool and I'm going to just move it a bit aside. So let's say something, something like this. And also what we can do is uh, work only on one side and then we're going to mirror the other side as well. So it's not that big of a deal, but let's try just to adjust as much as we can. So let's say this will work. And what I'm gonna do is go back into perspective and the same thing, I would come here. And now since this is a bit too thick, I would say uh, maybe something like that. Maybe something like this will work, even though that we could have loaded the reference uh, from the side, but if it's uh, any thicker, that's something that we can easily fix. Okay, so what is the next step after that? Well, now we need to adjust the, the other points to match uh, all this shape right here. Now, one thing worth mentioning here is that we have pretty decent amount of segments. And since we are dealing with curved surface, uh, we need these segments. If the, the surface is not so curved, usually you would like to work with as minimum number of polygons and edges as possible. So that's just something to keep in mind. But uh, now let's go ahead and make this tube editable. So let's come here and where it says make editable, converts parametric object into polygonal object. Meaning that currently we have a parametric object where all the uh, necessary details like rotation segments, cat segments, height, and so on can be adjusted here. Once we make that editable, so once I click, we don't have these values anymore. We only have uh, values now that are here. So now we access actually points, edges, and polygons before we couldn't access that. So now you can notice if I hover, we have access to those. So now that we actually have access to those, I'm going to zoom out a bit and I'm going to delete a few things. So I'm going to delete the full half simply because we're going to work on a symmetry and we're going to work on this side. So even if it's not symmetrical on this side, it doesn't matter because maybe image is not symmetrical or I didn't made it in Photoshop like that, but we are going to work in symmetry. And also what I'm going to delete is this lower part right here because we need to still adjust how this lower part will will look like. So let's do that next. So let's go here and I'm going to select rectangle selection and I'm going to go to let's say points and I'm going to select all of these points right here. Now there's one important option when you click on selection. It will say only select visible elements and it will ask you to have this on and off. So let's see what that means. If I toggle this out, you will now notice that all of the points from front and back are selected. If I come back and just click somewhere away, and if I come here and only select visible elements is on this time, and I do the same thing, and if I come here in front, you will notice that only frontal parts are selected. So that's something to, to uh, take note of because it can, uh, depending on what you need, sometimes you, you want to have this off. So in this case, we want to have this off and I'm going to delete this and just make sure actually that this part here is deselected. So I'm going to hit control. Actually, uh, I'm going to hit... Uh, uh, rectangle selection first and then I'm going to hit control and then I'm going to deselect this and with holding shift I'm going to select these so let's say come to here here and then delete now even though that we deleted the points uh, sometimes if you let's say come back and delete the polygons so let's do the same thing so I'm going to select and delete the polygons and something like that, press delete. And if I come to the points, you will still see that the points are still here. 
So meaning that we actually need to optimize. So whatever, whenever you delete polygons, you still have points left. So just make sure that once you do that, you go right click and then optimize. This will remove any unnecessary points. So let's just select these delete. So now we have that set as well. So now actually we can start modifying our mesh to fit what we need. So basically we need this off. So whatever we select here, I actually want to move and we can go to move even though that it's already selected and let's just adjust the points so that they're fitting to our to our object. And so I'm going to set a life selection and adjust the points so that they fit. Like that. And also what I would like to do is maintain uh, the same flow of the edges. As, I can, as you can notice, they're going in one direction. So the thing I do not want to do is something like this, let's say. So I don't want to have this flow. So maintaining the flow is very important. So meaning that if you see that they have flow like that, we'll try to match that flow. Unless you're trying to get any this any uh, specific distortions on the geometry meaning that you actually want some pinching and when I say pinching I mean when two points or edges are this close together they will cause pinching the more they are set apart in this case the more smooth the surface will be and we're gonna see that later but now let's just set this like that And there we are, I believe that these two we don't need, so I'm going to delete those. Okay, so now that we have that set up, everything is more or less in order, I would say. So maybe like that. And what I can do is turn the plane off and actually do some manual adjustment if I think that that will bring something so because the thing with the references they can lead you off from actually what you want to want to achieve so it's always worth to double check just in case okay so the thing here let me just go and frame default because i rotate it like that so i went into rotation even though that we cannot rotate so i'll just frame default and that's gonna bring it back so basically what we want to do next now is actually work on one side and mirror everything what we do on the right side so we're going to use symmetry for that and i'm going to go right here and put the tube right inside of the symmetry but notice one thing i'm going to turn the plane off right now we have tube on x-ray uh, the moment i put it in a symmetry the x-ray will be gone so basically we need to go into symmetry into basic and then enable x-ray again so that as you can notice here we can get some of that transparency back but we don't need that anymore so i'm going to toggle that off and as for the symmetry itself let's go here we can now go and change a few things here so Basically, mirror plane, we need to change to something like X, Y. And now, a few things about the symmetry I would like to mention. So let's come here and let's select these two points. And I'm going to push them out like that a bit. Uh, again, I'm playing with this. So frame default. And basically, in symmetry, if you have problems like this, where they're uh, where there's connection not so clear, you need to make sure that you have clamp points and axes and also delete polygons and axes. Now, at this point, we do not have any polygons in the middle, meaning that 
we still have an open hole here. If this hole would be closed, then you would want to have the lead polygons and axes on. So just something to bear in mind. And if I turn the symmetry on, let's increase the tolerance, let's say something like one, and then you will see that these points will come together. So basically that is all. Now we have our arch for the beginning shape. So if I turn the reference on, and if I come here into the right view, this is now our arch and we have this part set up. Now, the next thing that we need to work on is if I check my other reference, we need to work on this connecting piece right here. And just to see the other reference and to see on the thickness, I believe maybe this if I select all, we can now scale. So basically what I want to do is now go into polygon mode, uh, control A to select all, and then let's use scale and just maybe scale it slightly like that. I think that will, that will work. Okay, so let's then move in on to the next part and see how we can connect these two together.